I'm Tyler, founder of Clockwork Labs. We're a 40-person game studio, and we're developing an ambitious game on top of some really cool technology. I've been looking forward to this day for five years, because today we're going to share that technology with you. We've got a lot to get through, though, and it's only just the beginning. The game we're building is Bitcraft, an epic survival crafting, massively multiplayer game where all players join the same world and rebuild civilization from the ground up. The entire world is editable. Players can cut down forests or build roads or construct massive cities and trade routes. Bitcraft is our studio's first commercial game, and conventional wisdom is that you should never build an MMORPG as your first game, much less one of this scale and complexity. And this is the reason why. MMORPGs have historically been hugely complex engineering projects, requiring specialized engineers from many disciplines. We're talking hundreds of developers, over five to seven years, with budgets in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Not only does this restrict who can participate in the genre to exclusively large companies, but coordinating 250 people while also risking $200 million restricts how much experimentation you can do or how creative you can reasonably be. We've never had those kinds of resources. So in the words of Ernest Rutherford, we were gonna have to think. We needed to approach the problem from a completely new direction. We needed to dramatically simplify the backend architecture so our game devs could focus on gameplay and game design and not distributed systems and microservices. I'm proud to say that over the past five years, we've done exactly that. With only a handful of game engineers, We've built a fully featured MMORPG operating in production and at scale. Tens of thousands of players have explored the world of Bitcraft in our alpha tests already. And with millions of players signed up to play, many more will be exploring it in our upcoming beta. And today, I couldn't be more excited to share with you the revolutionary technology that got us here. SpaceTime DB 1.0, a production-ready, all-in-one backend solution for your multiplayer games. So let's get into it. If we want to understand why SpaceTimeDB is so revolutionary, we need to understand how MMORPGs are built today and where existing solutions stand for small teams. What makes them so much harder to build than indie games from a technical perspective? While large companies don't use off-the-shelf solutions, they typically build their own backends and distributed systems from scratch using cloud services. If you want to build an MMO that way, then at a minimum, you're talking Docker, Kubernetes, proxies, IAM roles, VPCs, load balancers, databases, web servers, game servers, custom networking configuration, real-time networking, microservices, two-phase commit protocols, analytic services, logging services, chat services, and on and on. You need dozens of specialists to build it and then a whole team just to keep it running. And there goes your budget. By contrast, for a single-player indie game, it's pretty simple. I write my game in a game engine, I take my game program, I install it on my computer, and I run it. Simple. My operating system abstracts over all the hardware underneath. Network cards, GPUs, CPUs, memory, etc. All a dev needs to know is the game engine and how to program. So is there a solution out there that makes it this easy to build an MMO? Well, let's take a look. I've made sort of a business 101 graph with whether something is a complete solution on one axis and how easy it is to use on the other axis. In the bottom right corner, you've got your core technologies and very specialized tools. These are great tools. They're super easy to use, and they solve their specific problem extremely well. But they're only a small fraction of what an MMO needs. Right here in the middle, you've got your game backend solutions. Since they're designed for games, they definitely solve a lot more of the problem for you. But none of them handle persistence, and they're also very opinionated. If you color outside the lines of what they were built for, they become very, very hard to use. And that puts us back up here, where we started cloud services and rolling at your own. The cloud's got everything you need, but good luck with that. There's a clear trend here. The closer you get to a complete solution, the more complex the problem becomes. And if we just add to this line, well, then we've failed. In fact, in order to build Bitcraft, we had to think about something completely different. This is SpaceTimeDB. Everything you need and stupidly easy to use. So what is everything you need? We believe that there are really just three foundational ingredients, storage, compute, and networking, and they all need to scale. In particular, you need transactional storage, server-side compute, and real-time networking. Let's see which of these ingredients each of the existing solutions has. 
You've got Firebase, which has transactional storage and real-time networking, but no server-side compute. You've got stuff like Unity Netcode, which has compute and networking, but not storage. None of them have all of them, except for SpaceTime DB. In fact, SpaceTime DB is so simple, it only has three features, and they correspond exactly to those three ingredients. Tables provide storage. Reducers, which are essentially cloud functions, provide compute. And subscription queries provide real-time networking. So how does that work? Well, you write your game's backend as a SpaceTime DB module. A module is a simple program written in whatever language you like. We officially support Rust and C-sharp modules today. Tables are database tables. SpaceTime DB is a relational database. You declare your tables right inside your code, just like you would using an ORM to connect your server to your database. Here we have a table defined in a Rust module on a player struct. The fields correspond to columns in the table. Very simple. Next, you define your reducers. Reducers are stateful, transactional cloud functions. They're basically the same functions you'd write in a regular game server. They run computations and update tables. You can do whatever you like, authorization logic, physics calculations, anything really. It's just regular server code. Then you take that module code, compile it to WebAssembly, and upload it to run on SpaceTime DB. You connect your clients to the database and call reducers, just like regular functions, with our powerful SDKs and code generation. Or make subscription queries against the data. Subscription queries are just regular SQL, but with a twist. With subscription queries, we evaluate your query and return the results. But we also maintain the connection and send your client updates so you can see the results change in real time. SpaceTime DB abstracts over the cloud, just like your desktop OS abstracts over your hardware. All that's left is to crank it to 11. You can connect thousands of clients with each making multiple calls per second. SpaceTime DB 1.0 is fast enough to handle all the server-side logic and all the real-time subscriptions for thousands of clients simultaneously. That's pretty much it. You now know how to make an MMORPG. And that's no exaggeration. The entire backend of BitCraft runs exclusively and entirely on SpaceTime DB with just those three ingredients. Chat messages, terrain data, players' positions, buildings, AI physics, everything. So how are we able to do all of this in a database? I thought databases weren't meant for this. Well, existing databases aren't meant for this, but SpaceTime DB is. You see, ordinarily in a database, your code is separated from your data by the network. In order for your game logic to access your database data, you've got to serialize a query, send it, go all the way through the OS stack, over the network, up the OS stack, receive, parse, plan, execute, and then go all the way back. This can take 400 microseconds at best and tens of milliseconds at worst. In SpaceTime DB, all of that is simply just gone, putting your code nanoseconds away from your data. We store your data in memory in cache-efficient tables right next to your code, which is running in the same process. There's very little overhead beyond what you'd find in a typical game server. In fact, the internal representation is similar to a highly performant ECS architecture. We are talking less than one microsecond round trip times rather than 400. Pretty stark. And that's not all. Even for large batch queries that don't go back and forth across the network, SpaceTime DB is way faster. Consider the straightforward operation of updating the positions of a million entities in your game. Here's the query written in SQL and the equivalent as a SpaceTime DB reducer. Postgres takes over three seconds to execute this query. SQLite, running in memory, takes over a second. SpaceTime DB takes just 200 milliseconds. That's almost 5 million rows per second. Even in this best case scenario for Postgres, SpaceTime DB is over 15 times faster. With this architecture, we give you near bare metal performance while being 10 times easier to use. SpaceTime DB can easily simulate physics and collisions for thousands of entities moving around in a single world, giving you the power to create multiplayer games you've only dreamed of. I just want to be clear. This is being simulated transactionally inside a database at 60 FPS. That is preposterous, and yet it works. Not only that, but SpaceTimeDB's advanced query optimization implements incremental query evaluation to provide real-time updates for thousands of entities to thousands of simultaneously connected clients, all while minimizing network data and traffic. Single database performance is only half the battle, though. SpaceTimeDB also allows you to scale your applications horizontally with intermodule communication, 
or IMC. With IMC coming later this year, your modules can send each other messages in real time, and SpaceTime DB will ensure they're delivered and processed exactly once. IMC is the actor model brought to databases. So SpaceTime DB is clearly fast, but none of that matters if it isn't secure. So SpaceTime DB was built with security in mind from the ground up. SpaceTime DB is written in Rust for maximum memory safety, and all hosted modules are run inside securely sandboxed WebAssembly instances ensuring that you, and only you, have complete control over access to your data. Conventional databases only provide coarse-grained role-based access control security models, meaning you should never allow clients to connect directly to your database. SpaceTime DB is different, though. Clients connect to the database, but they are only able to update data by calling your reducers, giving you unlimited expressiveness to write arbitrary authorization logic in your favorite language. For example, we can easily roll back a transaction by returning an error if a player is not high enough level to equip an item. This means you don't even have to learn a new security model. We're just embedding the same game server logic you've always been writing right into the database, protecting your data from malicious clients. And you can carefully and easily restrict what data can be read as well. Tables are private by default, but they can be exposed to clients with row-level security rules. These rules are evaluated per client in real time to ensure your clients only ever see rows they're authorized to see. So that's SpaceTime DB, and we think it's going to revolutionize how small teams make big games and real-time applications. We think it's going to make multiplayer applications 10 times easier to build and scale. But don't just take it from me, though. I'd like to introduce Ryan, the co-founder of Lightfox Games, who, with a team of just eight, developed Delivery Z a mobile MMORPG to talk about their experience developing on the platform. Delivery Z is a fully featured MMO where you mow down zombies driving around an open world city to deliver fast food in the middle of a zombie apocalypse. Even the apocalypse can't stop the gig economy. It's an MMO in the true sense of the word. You fight to expand the territory of your megacorp, blowing up other players along the way. You can see thousands of players moving around the city on the map simultaneously. We shipped Delivery Z in three months with just a handful of engineers. We started concepting the game in July and shipped it to the App Store before Halloween. 95% of the three-month development time was spent developing the front-end client. The back-end was completely plug-and-play. It's genuinely shocking how easy Spacetime DB made it to create a persistent open world which can handle such a massive amount of players in one city. Spacetime DB completely unlocked the team's creativity while enabling us to iterate incredibly quickly. It's a game changer. You can check out Delivery Z for yourself on Apple's App Store or the Google Play Store. Spacetime DB isn't just useful for building multiplayer games, though. It's also an extremely powerful tool for building multiplayer apps. And to talk to you about that, I'd like to welcome Scott, who, along with his co-founder, built Pogly, a collaborative editor for stream overlays. Streaming to platforms like Twitch, YouTube, and Kick usually is a one-person job. The streamer takes care of everything, from entertaining the viewer to the production of the stream. Pogly aims to change this, enabling streamers to offload the production of their stream to their moderation team. You and your moderators can work in a shared stream overlay editor, just like Figma. Editors of the canvas can create images, text, or customizable widgets in real time, allowing them to react to what's happening on the stream, enriching the moment for the viewer. There are dozens of pre-built widgets, from simple things like stickers to more complex things like dynamically updating death counters. With SpaceTime DB, implementing this complex multi-user application was a breeze. And with their expressive way of defining permissions, we've made it so streamers have fine-grained control over exactly who can modify their canvas and when. To top it all off, SpaceTime DB makes it easy to automatically spin up new modules hassle-free. Many top streamers, from Shroud to Mizkif, have already started using Pogly to level up their streams. So come check us out at pogly.gg. It's so awesome to see streamers adopting Pogly so quickly. It's an amazing application. The beauty of SpaceTime DB is that as a general purpose relational database, developers aren't constrained at all on what they can build. Even better, since we're planning to support the Postgres wire format later this year, 
you'll be able to incorporate SpaceTimeDB into your application stack incrementally rather than from scratch, just like you would with a regular database. Or if you need to, migrate away from SpaceTimeDB by seamlessly exporting your data with a simple query. So how can you get your hands on SpaceTimeDB? Well, today we're releasing SpaceTimeDB Standalone 1.0, a single node production version of SpaceTimeDB for free on GitHub. You can get started developing your apps and games immediately. We'd love if you give us a star. But that's not all. Today we're also releasing an even easier way to deploy into production, SpaceTimeDB Main Cloud. Main Cloud is a multi-tenant managed cloud service which runs on top of a large-scale SpaceTimeDB cluster. Publishing an application into production is as simple as SpaceTime Publish My App. Within seconds, your application is now running seamlessly in the cloud forever. We take care of the rest. SpaceTimeDB lets you focus on writing gameplay code rather than building infrastructure, networking, and serialization code before you can even get started. Persistent multiplayer games are now a fraction of the cost to develop. And with SpaceTimeDB main cloud deployment, they're also a fraction of the cost to run. Running a fully featured MMORPG like Bitcraft on main cloud with thousands of concurrently connected players only costs about $5 an hour. And with our cloud energy credit system, you can see exactly what to optimize to minimize your costs. With the launch of SpaceTimeDB main cloud, we also wanted to do something special for the community. The first $1 million of energy sold will be 90% off. That means you can buy $100 worth of energy for just $10, at least until we run out. You can purchase energy for your future projects at spacetimedb.com energy. For enterprise clients looking for on-prem deployments or who are interested in our dedicated cloud product, please reach out at sales at spacetimedb.com. We'd love to work with you to make your dream a reality. So we have standalone for single node deployments, main cloud for the fastest and easiest way to deploy SpaceTimeDB, an enterprise for those wanting dedicated clusters or on-prem deployments with enterprise customer service and support. And that's SpaceTimeDB. But that barely scratches the surface of the awesome features and capabilities that it provides. There's so much more that SpaceTimeDB can unlock. From database replication to DDoS protection to OpenID Connect compatibility, we've built in all the enterprise capabilities you need to run a production game. And with Bitcraft, we've dogfooded SpaceTimeDB shaving off all the rough edges for running a production game. That ensures we run into the issues and fix them before you even see them. We cannot wait to see what you all build with this. Thank you for checking out SpaceTimeDB. There is one more thing, though. I haven't talked about why we call it SpaceTimeDB. Turns out it's not just a cool-sounding name. It actually speaks to a hidden capability deep within the core of its architecture. You see, SpaceTimeDB doesn't just store the state of your game. It actually stores every change ever made to that state in an efficient, compressed, and archived format. Every chat message, every tree, every achievement, and every player movement. And soon, we're going to open up APIs to give you automatic game rewind and replay support, allowing you, your data scientists, and even your players to time travel through your worlds. So while it might be the end of this keynote, for SpaceTime DB. It's only just the beginning.